The KTM 790 Duke is one of Motorcycle.com's favorite motorcycles of 2018. It is such a fun bike to ride. The scalpel they call this bike and it fits because it is such a precise motorcycle. The 790 engine is killer. Lots of good power, lots of mid-range torque. I don't know how they made the 1290 uh, Super Duke R into this miniature version and kept all of the flavor of that bike. KTM did an amazing job with this bike. It really is tons of fun to ride. <laughs> Man, we could go on and on. But we do think there's one bike that we've always loved that would make a very good competitor to this KTM. We're talking about the Street Triple R from Triumph. 765, three-cylinder engine. It's always been a favorite of ours with the 675 version. The 765 obviously brings more power and who doesn't love more power, right? And so we thought it'd be an interesting test to bring the KTM 790 Duke and the Triumph Street Triple R together to go mano y mano. Now why the R version of the Triumph Street Triple? Because it's only a thousand dollars difference between the KTM and the Triumph in the R version. Once you go to the RS, you get quick shifter and more power, but you've also got like two grand higher price. So these are much closely related, much more closely related. We're gonna go rip on them and see how they do. Tom, I brought you out of semi-retirement because I know how much you love the Triumph Street Triple, the previous one. And now with the bigger engine, we've got a KTM 790 Duke to go against it. I think we've already formulated our, our ideas about both bikes, but what do you think so far? Some things are really standing out. Yeah, this is the first time in probably a long time that we might not actually have to go to the scorecard and pick a winner. I think we <laughs> kind of might have that decided this time around. And the, uh, the su surprising thing is, yeah, actually when I left Mo a year and a half ago, I had just done the press launch for this bike. And uh, I was really thinking about buying this as my own personal motorcycle because it is right. that good. It is one of the best all around naked bikes out there. You know, it's not the biggest and most powerful. It's not super Duke R territory, but man, it just does everything. But yes, I might be glad that I held off because <laughs> this new 790 Duke, boy, it is. A thousand dollars cheaper. <laughs> yeah, and I can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the word that really encapsulates this new uh, Duke is fun. That is just one of the funnest bikes I've ridden in a long time. Um, it's a smaller, lighter, more affordable package than the Super Duke R but it contains the same things. We were talking about the seating position. It still has this incredibly comfortable seating position with a lot of leg room, and you don't run out of quartering clearance. And we, we've been out to track with this, and we weren't touching down hard parts. It was amazing. Um, but uh, the weight thing that you just touched on, there's only 10 pounds difference. Like nine or 10. Nine or 10. Yeah, crazy. That does hold a gallon of fuel less, so that does make up a weight difference there. But even if that had the same amount of gas in it, it would still feel 50 pounds lighter than this thing, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, we've never called the Triumph a heavy motorcycle, but no. between the two of these bikes, when we hop on one and hop off that and hop onto the other bike, we're like, holy crap, that Triumph feels 100 pounds heavier than the KTM. How do they do it? It's, it's wild what KTM have done with I think, interesting point from an engine perspective, the Triumph three-cylinder sounds great. We've always loved the way that sounds. The twin in the 790 Duke sounds really muffled with this exhaust on it. I've been fortunate enough to hear it with a, a really cool open exhaust on it and it sounds amazing. On the dyno, the Triumph makes more power than the KTM, but only after the KTM hits redline. So from the bottom up until the KTM's red line, the KTM makes more power. And then after that, the Triumph goes higher in the revs and makes more power that way. Riding them on the street anyway, I can keep up with you on the Triumph pretty easily on this KTM. I just have to shift more often to do it. And then on the Triumph, it's like, just hold the gear and whack it open and it'll just go. It's a really cool feeling and it's all the cool stuff we liked about the Triumph Triple before. But I think I'm getting so enamored by this KTM that I'm suddenly, the luster is less shiny.
Yeah, I mean, the Triumph hasn't changed in any way. It's still a great all-around motorcycle. Yeah. But, like I said, fun. That thing, whether at the track or on the street. And normally I'm not a fan of parallel twins as far as performance engines go. You know, give me a V-twin or an inline four, a triple, you know, that's a little bit more my flavor. But this thing is phenomenal. I like this engine a lot. It's, it carries its power fantastic through the whole rev range. And yes, you do have to shift a little bit more, but it's got a quick shifter. <laughs> so, Up and down. Yes, <laughs> so there's that. It's not the best quick shifter, but it yeah, has it. But it has it, and <laughs> the Triumph does not, and the Triumph's a thousand dollars more. Uh, adjustable suspension on here, right? Which is nice. You know, we were able to dial it in for the track a little better. Not much other than preload on the KTM, but there's not big complaints. I don't think either track or street for the the suspension units on this. Right. Yeah. It's. Crazy to think that we named the Street Triple RS our Naked Bike of the Year this year. The Triumph we're riding now is just the R, not the RS, so you don't get the quick shifter on just the R version of the Street Triple. The engine power is a little bit detuned from the RS version, but generally speaking, it's largely the same bike. The bike we have here, again, the R version, Yes, it has the suspension that's adjustable, but there's no quick shift there like we mentioned. Conversely, the KTM, you get the suspension that is what it is, but you get a quick shifter. In my mind, I'd rather have the quick shifter for everyday use. It's just that more, that much more usable to me. I think you'd agree with that too, right? Yeah, it's more of a, a, a track-oriented, you know, technology, but I mean, especially if you're canyon riding, you're going to use it, but yeah, yeah, you know, just either freeway around town, you still find yourself using it, because it's just, you know, so easy to right. use. Right. And for the money that you're saving, you know, you can put it into some uh, better suspension. Right. Yeah, so about the track portion of our test, the Triumph, that 765 triple is now the Moto2 engine for 2019 and the next coming years. And of course, KTM's motto is ready to race. These aren't really supposed to be track bikes, but with the Triumph, you got the 765 triple that they use in Moto2 now. And with the KTM, well, they always say they're ready to race. So why not put their money where their mouths are? We're here at Chugwalla Valley Raceway, joining our friends at Ridiculous Racing. We're gonna go rip on these two and see how they do. away from me on the street. This Triumph is just going to walk away from this KTM. It's going to be no question, no brainer. <laughs> we don't think that at all. It's, it's kind of the other way around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know personally, I went into this thinking this Triumph is going to walk on the KTM. And now sitting here, standing here, no way, Jose. Uh, it's completely reversed 180 in my opinion. I think you're right there with me, right? Yeah, the KTM, again, largely for its 
that feeling of light weightedness is, is, is it's unbelievable. You, if you could ride these back to back, you would know what we're talking about because it doesn't look like much on paper, but it's one of those things where paper just doesn't tell the whole story. Uh, this thing was so flickable, so, you know, corner ready. Uh, it was an, an immediate. Uh, the Triumph, again, not bad. It's just, it's, it's heavier. It's more lethargic, you know. Um, it, it, it holds its lines fine. It does everything well, but that thing was just, it was like a more of a race bike ready to go at the track. Mm -hmm. And then even out here on the street, though, it's still ready to go and do the canyon rides and a better composure than the Triumph is. It's hard for me to be talking negatively about that Triumph just because we've loved it for so long. Well, I think um, there are some advantages. Like we talked about the adjustable suspension on this, you know, so that's a big, you know, creature comfort. The seat, there, this is a much more nicely padded seat if you're just doing some freeway riding or you're doing a lot of commuting, that type of thing. The foot peg relationship to the seat's a little tighter than the KTM, so the taller you are, the bigger factor that's gonna become. Um, again, this is kind of like your Super Duke. It's got amazing uh, leg room and ground clearance. So, yeah, I guess you make a good point. If you do largely commuting and such, the smaller gas tank on the KTM could be an issue for you if you just would rather not visit the gas station a whole lot. In either sense, again, if you're you know a track day enthusiast or you know just more of a canyon carver, I mean, either way, it was, I think, again, in terms of fun, <laughs> it was the superior motorcycle to the Triumph. And as far as the electronics go, both have traction control, both have ABS, uh, but with the KTM, you can adjust the traction control settings. With the Triumph, it's either on or off. You can turn the ABS on or off on both bikes, but the KTM, you can go into supermoto mode and have only the front ABS work and the rear you can get squirrely with. So, you know, having that adjustability to, to do more with the KTM, it's also something to think about. Yeah, you can set your throttle sensitivity as well. And that I really enjoy having. Braking performance on either bike, I thought were pretty similar. Yeah. There was a little bit better feel at the lever on the KTM. I could feel what was going on a little bit more. That's, that's just a small accolade, but I did prefer the braking performance on the KTM a little bit. So as you can see, as good as a Triumph Street Triple is, and don't get us wrong, it really is a good motorcycle. Man, that KTM 790 Duke really is a home run. Yeah, the suspension components aren't really that adjustable, but they're not that bad as they are, and the rest of the package is so, so good. It is such a fun bike. The scalpel moniker really fits that motorcycle. And for once, Tom is right. We don't need the Mo scorecard to determine our winner because I think it's clear to see both of us really like the KTM 790 Duke.